Thanks for joining us today. It's a very important time of year for the Brattleboro area and the greater Wyndham County area. It is Project Feed the Thousands time, and with us, as they've been year after year, our co-founders and co-chairs, George Haynes and Larry Smith on my right, Larry to my immediate right, George to Larry's right, and on my left, the longtime, in fact, founding director of the Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center, Melinda Busno. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. This has been a rough year in every stretch of the imagination. And I've got to ask, did you ever think, George and Larry, that we would be here in this location 17 years later and finding that the need for food assistance has gone up exponentially? I think we knew we'd be here uh, talking about food, but not talking about uh, the greater need uh, than there was 17 years ago, and that we've gone from a thousand people to thousands of people. Yeah, I would second that. In, our, in my wildest dreams, I never thought that uh, we would be at the level that we are now in terms of hungry people. Uh, as Larry said, when we started uh, 17 years ago, and as we start our 18th campaign, uh, we said, wow, there's a thousand people in our area, a thousand people in our area that are, that are hungry. And uh, now that, uh, that number is probably, if you take not only the greater Brattleboro area, but some of the other communities where the campaign is being run, probably approaching 15,000 people, between 12 and 15,000. It's mind boggling. That is very, very scary. And just to confirm some of that and give us a look at what the immediate landscape is. Melinda, I understand that uh, as we record this for broadcast, you've begun giving out Thanksgiving baskets. Uh, give us a lay of the landscape. How does it look? Tim, it looks as if we have a lot of desperate, hungry people. We are seeing a lot more families that are doubled and tripled up this year, that are sharing housing and also sharing Thanksgiving dinner. So although we may have fewer households, uh, many of them are feeding 12 or 15 people, not just for Thanksgiving, but all the time. So we're giving some two turkeys instead of just one. We don't have as much to go with turkeys this year as we've had in past years, but we're able to meet the needs so far. That should scare all of us because the circumstances of um, those who are working for a living, and that seems to be fewer and, and fewer of us, is that uh, we're getting closer and closer to that line where we too will need help. Tim, it really is frightening to think that people with a paycheck are frequently only one or two paychecks away from being in the same boat as the people that they are making donations to help. So when you, you got all this together, I'm curious from your perspective, Melinda, what happened to get a couple of area businessmen involved in helping alleviate hunger, not just as a company project, but with an obvious passion. Well, I know it happened with Larry because the drop-in center was down on Harmony parking lot in our first location, and I dragged him in there to do a news story <laughs> on a food bank truck that was coming to deliver extra food supplies. And it opened his eyes to the amount of hunger and the fact that these were people that are our friends, our neighbors, our relatives, and people we see every day, that the hidden hunger was huge. And that was 18 years ago. And then he brought George on board uh, because they were friends and they worked together in different projects. And he had the passion to say, George, you really have to help. So Larry and George, you two got together and kind of batted about some ideas. And this became an annual project? It did. Uh, George and I got together uh, several months after uh, I did that, that broadcast from the Harmony parking lot. And George said, you're the community radio station, WTSA. I'm the community bank. When George was president of Brattleboro Savings and Loan, I think we need to do a community project, something that would have impact, that would uh, be important, and um, let's bat around some ideas. And we did, and I said, George, um, I think we need to raise food and do it for the Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center. And like me, uh, several months earlier, the what? And I said, come on, George, we're going down. And we saw the food shelf uh, with Melinda, and George was as surprised as I was that the shelf was practically empty and that we needed to raise food. And those humble beginnings, uh, our first campaign in 1994, 
we filled half a tractor trailer truck of food and I think we raised seventeen hundred dollars in cash for the Brattleboro area drop-in center and we called it project feed the thousand yeah the uh, the importance of, of doing something for the community as, as Larry mentioned batting it around uh, my vision was to do something that uh, we would do on an annual basis. In some ways, uh, part of my vision at that time was, was the uh, reformer Christmas stocking that had uh, year in and year out supplied warm clothing uh, for children. But it was done every year and the community was involved in supporting that. So initially when Larry said about fe feeding hungry people or people in the Brattleboro area were hungry, uh, I thought he had lost his mind, and I, th and I thought also that uh, uh, we were talking about people that are just homeless, uh, people that uh, maybe really didn't live in the area on a permanent basis. Of course, once I went to the drop-in center with Larry, that whole, uh, th that whole paradigm changed. And uh, in some ways, uh, uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the, the story of hunger uh, is a story that continues, and it, we knew at the time that it was something that we, could, that we would do on an annualized basis. But as I said earlier, it, it, in, in no way did we really imagine that uh, the need would grow to the level that it has today. And, it, and in some ways, it's, uh, it's been that way every year. Uh, we didn't get from 1,000 to almost 15,000 people uh, in, in 17 years. But each year, uh, it seemed like, and it was true, that the amount of, of, of food and money that we'd raised the previous year was not going to be enough for this year. And so we'd raise the goal, and we'd raise the money, and we'd raise the food, and only to find out that that really didn't last as long as we thought, and that we would have to do that again the following year. So how did this become more than just a cult of personality for the two of you? Obviously, you've got other people involved. Well, yeah, and, I'm, and you know, we, we do have a way uh, through coercion, intimidation, and uh, I think uh, <laughs> commitment to get people involved. But, you know, it's not, it's not difficult when it's the right cause and, um, and you outline why it is so important. And hunger really is not a surprise to people in the area. I think the extent of it was, that's why... Melinda's been a great help because a lot of us, uh, George and I, had not realized how many people, our friends, neighbors, people in this community, surrounding communities, not people passing by, uh, do not have enough food to eat. How many children don't have enough food? Uh, elderly, veterans. And when you start relaying to people the numbers and how much food leaves the drop-in center, um, you can't help but get involved. Um, but I will say, to, uh, to get to a point where we fill 25 tractor-trailer trucks with food and raise $125,000 with no administrative help and just sheer volunteers to participate and make it happen, it's, it's difficult, but we're very persuasive. Yeah, I think, the, uh, I th I think what helped us, as, uh, and maybe what helped us, was that the need continued to grow. In uh, that first year, uh, we said bring the food to the bank, which made no sense at all after the first week. It was absolutely insane that we even thought of doing that. But anyway, uh, by establishing drop-off locations at grocery stores, uh, that widened out the awareness. And I think uh, after a couple of years, uh, one of the things that was a, a huge uh, boost in uh, awareness in the community was involving the schools. Mm. Once we got school children involved, uh, that seemed to really give us a boost. Children would not only were, were willing to help and participate, but of course they would go home, talk to their parents, uh, and again the circle continued to widen. And as Larry said, uh, we tried to persuade in every way that we could uh, area businesses to, uh, to, to get involved and uh, also uh, service organizations. And so as, uh, as we marched forward, uh, the circle continued to widen. So now it comes down to the start of year 18, and the two of you have decided that some new blood is needed. However, you will still stay on as co-founders, and really I can't see either of you not being involved in, in this as long as you can lift a finger to help. 
Yeah, I think uh, the, the, over the last couple of years, uh, as uh, again the need has grown uh, and we continue to need to bring more people on board, uh, Larry and I uh, got to the point where we we're saying, you know, how long can we keep doing this effectively and uh, continue to, to, to provide the type of leadership uh, to meet the need? Uh, as, uh, as you know, uh, this is my fourth year of retirement. I don't have the same circle of influence or resources that I had as president of the Brattleboro Savings and Loan. Uh, I'll let Larry speak uh, about his own uh, personal uh, responsibilities and so forth with, uh, with energy, but energy, but uh, the, you know, that's part of it. Part of it is, uh, uh, you know, we get older. Uh, the energy level <laughs> for me is not the same. Not that I don't have the enthusiasm. But uh, in order to run a campaign the size that we've been running it the last several years, uh, it, it takes not only a lot of hard work, but it takes uh, the, uh, the energy and the commitment to, uh, to, to continue to organize that. And the other thing is being retired. Frankly, uh, I'm not uh, in the area as much as I used to be. I've done some traveling. And as we've said many, many times, Project Feed the Thousands isn't about just the six-week drive that we have around this time of the year. Hunger is year-round, so the vision has always been we wanted to get uh, the community involved on a year-round basis, and frankly, from my perspective, that's what we needed in terms of having the type of leadership and, as you said, fresh blood uh, that, uh, that could take the campaign and, and carry it on in the future not only at the level that we've had uh, and done successfully in the past, but to take it even to a higher level. And George and I have batted this around for several years, that uh, we wouldn't do this forever, but um, Project Feed the Thousands has never been about us. However, um, if the uh, opportunity arose that we could find a chairman, co-chairman, um, that we believed could carry on the mission of Project Feed the Thousands, um, the way we have and with the, the passion that we have, um, we'd recognize that and we'd act on it. Until that time, we would remain co-founders and co-chairs. And it just so happens this year, um, things fell into place. And, and perfectly in terms of uh, Kelly Corbeil, the general manager and president of WTSA, the founding sponsor of uh, Project Feed, and Jeff Morse, who's the, the CEO at River Valley Credit Union. When, when we started this project, Jeff uh, was, I think, the CFO at Brattleboro Savings and Loan and worked hand-in-hand -hand with George on Project Feed. And again, a financial institution known well in the community for its community involvement uh, and with a staff uh, with that same passion. Um, George and I just decided this, this is a perfect match. This is the right thing to do, and it's the right time. And while we will always be co-founders of this project, and I will continue to be involved, and I know George will, it's time to have uh, two new co-chairs and um, bring this to the next level. Totally agree with Larry. Uh, the perfect choice. Uh, both uh, individuals bring a lot to the table. And as, uh, as uh, Larry said, WTSA from the very beginning, Kelly now the uh, owner and general manager, has that same passion. Jeff from day one at the Brattleboro Savings and Loan, now the CEO at River Valley Credit Union. Uh, Jeff has been involved from the very beginning, and, uh, and his organization does a lot of things uh, now that Brattleboro Savings and Loan used to do. Well, we look forward to a very, very strong transition. I've got a call over George Haynes, Larry Smith, and Kelly Corbeil. Sorry, boss, it's a command performance. Um, this is a transition moment for Project Feed the Thousands. George and Larry, the co-founders, the co-chairs, and in effect handing it off to uh, one of the uh, brand new co-chairs. Gentlemen, uh, what can you say about the people you've chosen? Well, they certainly look a lot better than we do. <laughs> George and I, uh, quite seriously, uh, several years ago, um, this, this is a, a big effort, a huge effort. 25 trucks, $125,000, a lot of logistics in a short amount of time, and we're getting old. And uh, 
always uh, the mission has been in front of us to raise the money, to raise the food, and that uh, when the right combination, the right people, and the right time came, we would know. And it was this year, and we found the absolutely perfect people and George will explain why, but it's Kelly Corbiel who owns WTSA and Jeff Morse, the CEO uh, at River Valley Credit Union. And it just couldn't have been a better match for this project and I think the right time. George? George? Yeah, I second what Larry said. And I think uh, several reasons why uh, Kelly and Jeff are our are, are choice, uh, the right choice. Uh, First of all, uh, the, the magnitude of the project has grown where each year it just gets bigger and bigger. The need is bigger. Uh, as Larry said, we are getting old. I, it's my fourth year of retirement. I don't have the resources I used to have or the energy. And so uh, we picked two people who uh, have the same passion. And that's really what we need. We need passion to continue this program because of the need and not only continue it this year, but continue it in the ensuing years as we go forward. So. Uh, obviously, Kelly, uh, owner of WTSA, a, a founding sponsor, uh, has that same passion. Jeff Morse, uh, CEO of River Valley Credit Union. Uh, Jeff was uh, with, uh, with me at the Brattleboro Savings and Loan uh, when we started this uh, 18 years ago. So uh, he has always been involved, always had the passion, and uh, he has taken that same passion with him now as the CEO of River Valley Credit Union. And so uh, uh, those two make a perfect team, and I think we'll not only continue what Larry and I started, but even raise it to greater heights. And Kelly, those of us that know you uh, are just continually impressed by your positive attitude and your just unlimited sense of energy, so we know the project is in good hands. Well, thank you. It's a, it's, a, it's a big need this year, and it's a big undertaking, but I have these two guys and Jeff by my side, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll hit the goals. And joining us in the balance of our program, along with Melinda Busno, is one of the co-chairs for Project Feed the Thousands, the owner and general manager of WTSA in Brattleboro, and somebody I'm proud to call boss, Kelly Corbiel. Good, good to see you again. Good to see you. Now, I have to ask that as anybody involved with an effort as big as Project Feed the Thousands, we all tend to put our own spin on things. And I know that you have come up with at least one major event as part of the campaign. Tell us about that. Um, yes, we have an event that's going to be December 3rd. It's at Landmark College. It's a cover band. It's an Aerosmith cover band. And they're, the name of the band is Draw the Line. And they're the only endorsed Aerosmith band um, that exists. And they're amazing. And they're going to be on Broadway next year. And they're coming to do this benefit concert to help Project Feed the Thousands. So um, it's about 400 tickets we're trying to sell. And all the proceeds from that concert will go to Feed the Thousands. It's interesting that you came up with this because... In looking at the different groups this organization has tried to target over the years, uh, Larry and George and Melinda, and in, in some part myself, we've talked to school children, we've talked to seniors, we've talked to different groups. I think young adults might be the, the missing piece to all this. I would agree. And Aerosmith, I don't know if anyone realizes this, uh, played way back when, um, before there were anyone on Flat Street which is why we were actually trying to get Aerosmith. However, they're in Japan. So we got this cover band, and it's great because it's all ages, and it's open to all ages. And right now, as everyone knows, Steven Tyler is big with American Idol, so my son is 11. He likes Aerosmith, as well as me. You know, I'm older, and people older than me like Aerosmith. So it was just a good pick of a band um, because it hits all ages. So hopefully we sell it out and raise some good money. So really, the, the whole effort is to include everyone possible and not only raise food and raise funding, but uh, just as important, raise awareness. Exactly, exactly. Now, in addition, uh, you have gotten involved with a, with a number of different efforts as part of the campaign. Why is this all important to you? Um, well, Feed the Thousands is a well-established um, food drive for this area and it's huge, it's enormous. And um, it just, it's one of those things that in this area it's a huge need and I'm sure Melinda probably already spoke about, you know, about 50% of the kids in the schools have reduced lunches. Um, she had a 20% increase this year 
and need uh, people using the, the drop-in center and it just it's an effort that is needed you we don't want anyone to be hungry and it breaks your heart to think kids are needing adults are needing I mean I was in there the other day and um, a good example or an eye-opener to me was there was a family in there that looked to me just like my own self and there they were looking for coats for themselves and their child and you would have never ever thought that this you know husband wife and son would have ever been using the food shelf but they were there using it so it's a need that people need to be aware of and need to help to support especially these days the line is so close between have and have not we either are part of a solution or people looking for help. I, I, I gotta ask, Melinda, at this point, what is considered items that would really help those in need the most? Tim, as we move forward and past the holidays, I mean, we certainly are going uh, for Thanksgiving Christmas baskets to be looking for turkeys and hams and stuffing and cranberry sauce. But we're also year round Tuna fish and peanut butter are two of the things that are stock protein items that children will eat, that will feed a family reasonably and cheaply. We also need pasta, pasta sauces, cereal, juice. This time of year, we're looking for soups as we get into flu season. If people are sick, they really would like some soup. And then the personal care items, because folks that get food stamps, their food stamps only pay for about 52% of a family's food needs for a month. They also do not pay for anything you can't eat. So toothpaste, shampoo, deodorant, cleaning supplies, paper products, none of those things are covered. Diapers aren't covered. So for people to be able to access a food shelf and get those things as well as food is huge. And how important is the association with the Vermont Food Bank, which now has a uh, southern warehouse in Brattleboro? Tim, it's a huge help because we can get food every week instead of once or twice a month. We can go to the food bank and see what they have in, and we can actually access things that normally we wouldn't be able to access if they were just in South Barrie. And certainly a special thank you goes out to CNS Wholesale Grocers, who has been, over the years been a major partner in making all this possible. Oh, it certainly does. They are so wonderful. They're such good neighbors, and they help us so much. They will bring, they promised 20 truckloads of food this year out of the 25 of our goal. And if they come through with 20 truckloads of food, we will meet that goal for food. You know, it's important to remember that Project Feed the Thousands is not just the Brattleboro Area Drop-In Center mm -hmm. Food Shelf. This organization, this human effort, is helping food shelves throughout the greater Wyndham County area, Kelly? Correct. Yeah, it's just um, people don't realize, I mean, we say over 25 food shelves, but... It's, you know, Wilmington, Guilford, Hinsdale, Darmerston. It's, it's everywhere. It's all of Wyndham County. And certainly when food is raised in those areas, particularly uh, in the Deerfield Valley, some of our viewers in that area, the Townsend Food Shelf will be able to uh, make sure that they're able to uh, retain those goods in the Bellows Falls area, the Our Place Drop-In Center, and in Wilmington, the Deerfield Valley, the... Uh, the Deerfield Valley Food Shelf, an area that is still trying to recover from just incredible devastation from, from Hurricane Irene. I was just in Wilmington still a few days ago, and while many of the businesses uh, are getting back on their feet, others are still trying to, and it's going to be a long haul. And This is certainly a year where your help is going to be needed more than ever. So how can people make that next step? How can people make a contribution to Project Feed the Thousands? They can send a check to the River Valley Credit Union in Brattleboro. There are going to be flyers going out in the printed media. There is a website, feedthethousands.org, where you can see the address to send checks. There are going to be cash and check donation boxes in businesses all over the area. And then the larger stores will have food donation boxes. And every school about is going to have a food drive. Many uh, groups in the faith community will have food drives. So if you see a bin or you see a place to put cash boxes, then and if you, uh, if you would like to have one and don't, then call Karen Cedargren at River Valley Credit Union. Karen will get you one. You know, an important thing to remember is when you're shopping, many of the major markets have donation baskets. If you're picking up a dozen of something, maybe make it a baker's dozen, 
and donate the 13th to Project Feed the Thousands. There are many, many people in our region who um, just depend on food shelves in this day and age for their overall food for the month. And certainly, Melinda, uh, you have been on, on the front lines since day one. Where are we going with all of this? Tim, I wish I knew. I mean, certainly our long-range goal at the Drop-In Center and organizations like ours across the country are that there no longer be hunger or homelessness, that people have affordable health care and child care, they have a place to sleep at night that's safe and warm, and they have food on the table. Right now, it's frightening, and as the economy stays difficult, it is going to continue to be frightening. We all have to look to our state and national leaders to really focus on fixing this problem in a permanent way and not putting Band-Aids on it. You know, the thing to remember is that this is a big job helping our neighbors, but it's one that the Brattleboro area does exceptionally well, and it's one of the things that makes this community special. It may be a big job, but we can't afford to slack. This is something all of us need to share responsibility in, and I'm, I'm just very glad that, Kelly, you've taken this on, and Melinda, that you continue to take this on, and that I have the chance through my employer to be involved in, in helping some of the people in our region. Again, Project Feed the Thousands. Here's how you can help. Online, projectfeedthethousands.org. Yes. Okay. Send the check to River Valley Credit Union or make a donation, either cash or food, or your shop. This is Tim Johnson. Look into your heart this holiday season because if you do, you'll know that you'll do the right thing and we really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.